January 21st, 2010. It's a date sixth graders at Grand Mesa Middle School have marked on their calendars since October. They didn't think it'd come to an end. <laughs> uh, it's the fourth annual Science Fair at Grand Mesa Middle School. Well, it was open to everybody, sixth, seventh, and eighth, but only sixth graders took advantage of it. Um, Mr. Walker and I both teach sixth grade, so we had it be mandatory. So we have, if I'm not mistaken, 88 projects. 88 projects and 206 kids that participated. 206 kids given the opportunity to team up or work as individuals to participate in the scientific method. The collection of data through observation, experimentation, and the formulation and testing of a hypothesis. Our project is we're testing whether or whether or not plants grow better, better in soil or compost. Well, we tested ground level ozone in our school for our science fair experiment. And what we did was we hung one of these, which is a coffee filter, dipped in cornstarch, potassium iodide, and distilled water, and each room in the school. Um, we need a, we light a piece of paper on fire and put it into the milk bottle, and then we dip a balloon in some water, and then we put it on the opening and it gets pulled in by fire, a, a vacuum created by fire. And, you know, they, they went through that scientific method again, they had to do the research, they, they had to come up with their own projects, and they had to refine it, they had to, you know, it, it was everything. You know, they, they found out that there's art in there, there's reading, there's language, there's math. I mean, it covered all the curriculum. How many times have you guys tested this? Um, a few times. I don't really know how much we've tried. That's like now does a balloon pop when it gets too hot, or? Oh, no, it no. just goes right in. <coughs> and, and an egg can do that too, huh? Yes. Yeah. It, if it's hard boiled. If it's hard boiled. Yeah, and the so shell's off. The shell has to be off? Yes. Wow, fascinating. And it was great watching them yesterday set up. They were so proud setting up their projects. So, you know, we talked about that internal. You know, they're working for themselves, and, and, and each one of them has done that. And you can also see like how nervous they are coming in. They're just like, I just want to do well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes it's the first time we've seen that pride. You mm -hmm. know, I just want to do good. Mm -hmm. And to have that mentality is really cool to see. 206 kids, 88 projects, only three winners. Those three winners would be headed to the district science fair at Mesa State College in February. The pressure was on, not just for the students, but also for the judges. And the clarity of um, how the student presents, the presentation of it, the, um, the way that they actually, you know, the neatness of it, um, whether it's uh, very clear, um, if state, they, go ahead. Their stated hypothesis and then the conclusion after they conducted their tests. Is it a fairly easy process for you guys to do, or do you have to make a lot of subjective decisions? A lot of subjective <laughs> decisions. Probably if we were science teachers, it would help us. <laughs> <laughs> so, the yeah. kids have done great, though. Yeah, yeah. they really, they really have. My project was I invented a car filter. It's to filter out car exhaust to help the environment, and it took me two tries to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Where'd you come up with the idea? Um, I really don't like the environment going whack because polar bears are dying and the environment's just kind of destroying because car filter, or because not car filters, because car exhaust and stuff like that. So I decided to see if I could fix it a little bit by making a car filter. And so tell me a little bit about what this is. Um, you stick this on the end of the exhaust pipe right here. And when you turn on the car, it blows out exhaust here and it filters a lot of it out because that's how it was when it wasn't filtering that's how dirty it got in 30 seconds and that's how clean it was just putting the filter on for 30 seconds our question was how will the climate affect the rotting time of the banana so we put it in different climates to we, see how it would affect it in seven days we had a dry climate a controlled climate a, and a humid climate and the controlled is pretty much just regular it's just in a bin that uh, it was open, but it, nothing was changed to it. Yeah. The lines, which we had figured out are the ones who had powered the uh, clock the most, and the grapefruits had a dim view on the clock, and this one was the second. 
<laughs> See, it's not quite as strong as the clock. There was a 90% clearest view of the clock for the limits, and there was a 95% of the clearest view for the lines. You've got... The, the, these are working strictly on the electricity inside, uh, the energy inside of fruit. The citric yes. acid. Yes. Fantastic. And also, if you look at this, the citric acid within the thing kind of turns this a light yeah, color. It turns it, uh, if if you leave it in for a while, it starts to weather away the color. Okay, our variables were independent, and that was our type of juices, and our dependent was our acidic level. And our constant was the cranberry juice, the grape juice, the... Uh, orange juice and all the materials and our conclusion was that the grape huh, the orange juice did not work and the grape juice had the most acidic level by 30 to 50 and the cranberry juice had no none and if we were to do this experiment again we'd probably use more pH strips and more technical what was the best part of this project? The best part of it, I think, is watching the ants. Has it been a lot of fun to watch the ants? Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part would be watching the ants, too. Watching the ants, too? All right. And what's been the best part of this project for you? Oh, um, working together. Yeah. Yeah? And what was your favorite part of this? Well, uh, how to get to do the experiment, getting to pick up the wires, yeah. and Hooky finally the wires. figuring out that it works. Uh, doing it with uh, uh, good group members that participate in everything and uh, being able to make this. Just the joy of being able to work all together on something that Except we could possibly do. What was the best part of this project, guys? Um, I'm not all too sure that. Well, it definitely wasn't the smell of the bananas after it was done. My lo my locker doesn't smell good right now. So, yeah. um. With the District 51 communications team, I'm Ryan T. Cook.